water supplies in the late 1800s were developed all over our country as populations grew and areas began to become more industrialised and the Tees Valley uh, was one of those. So between 1890 and about 1910, three reservoirs were built to support that area, but the population then was only about 11,000 people, which is quite small. And then over time, that proved to not be enough. So after the 1930s, more thought was put into this and a further three reservoirs were built, of which Cow Green was the last to be built in 1970 and it was the biggest and by this time the population had shot up to around about 85,000 people and that's why it was needed. So Cow Green Reservoir was built to support two water treatment works in the Tees Valley. One is at Lartington which is near um, Barnard Castle and then one down in Darlington which is called Broken Scar. Actually the, before those two water treatment works were built around the same time that the valley used to be served by a steam driven pumping station um, but that was overtaken when all of this work was ultimately done. So Cow Green's a very big reservoir and in conjunction with the other two reservoirs allows us to make around about 300 million litres of clean drinking water every day between those two treatment works. So about this time civil engineers were getting quite familiar with how to build reservoirs, particularly in the Upland Pennines, quite a number of them had been done. But there were some particular challenges with Cow Green and in particular because it was built with a dam that was going to go onto a rock interface rather than what had typically been done before with it, which was a clay interface. So one of the challenges when you're going with a hard interface to a soft interface is the possibility of it leaking. And so engineers really had to think about how they were going to embed the two and that was done very successfully. Something else that was very different about Cow Green and it just showed the way that technology had moved on as well was that Cow Green was one of the first reservoirs to have geotechnical instrumentation put in that dam which allows the civil engineers to measure whether or not it's moving and what stresses it's underneath and actually some of that measurement is still in use today but you'd now find that kind of geotechnical instruments in every single dam that's built in the more modern era so that was a real breakthrough at Cow Green. We were now able to serve that new population, that increasing population and also the industrialisation that happened particularly at the mouth of the Tees. But then ICI decided that they wanted to um, focus their work on Teesside and this was going to bring even more development and at that point um, it was decided that there wasn't sufficient water in the catchments of Teesside and so a new project which was the Kielder project was conceived and started to be planned and that um, had a whole different story and a whole different set of engineers. So I think the story of water development in the North East is interesting how we've taken it from the initial stages of using the, the valleys that were available but then finding that the humans and their need both in terms of population um, and also in industry needed more and so the civil engineers were given the task of thinking what to do next. What's exciting about these particular projects is it shows how civil engineering helps um, a, a country develop, its industry develop and populations to be able to support themselves as well as they grow and as our country becomes more prosperous and without that then we wouldn't be able to be the country that, that we all know today and the successful country that we are. So I think civil engineering in its many forms, in this case it's supporting water supply but whether it's supporting the building of railways which was another critical um, development thing that was going on at a very similar time I think to water development, this really aided prosperity and success. So if you're thinking about a career in civil engineering I think what I think is exciting is the real opportunity to make a difference on a massive scale. These projects that were built by Victorian engineers in the first instance and then followed up by engineers in the 50s are still there. They're still doing their job and all the civil engineers that were involved in them and the generations beyond them can point to what was done there and its enduring support of prosperity in our country.